Sometimes a camera has got to move just to keep up with the action. Other times a moving camera is just plain cool. The shifting of foreground, midground, and background objects add visual dynamics to a scene that can heighten drama and excitement. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at several ways to get that camera moving. I've seen some good tutorials covering the use of Legos to create a camera dolly, which is a good way to roll the camera forward to follow the action without a track getting into the shot. The important thing is to make sure the camera or device is secured tight. I'm using double-sided duct tape. It's also good to reinforce everything so that it holds together and so it has some weight to it. Just moving it forward by eye is going to produce chattery movement. For smoother movement, attach a wire to the base. When you animate it moving forward, use a ruler taped along the path you want it to take and move the dolly exactly the same distance for every frame, about the same distance you're moving the object is following. Just reposition the ruler as the dolly comes to the end of its length. And be sure to pass some set pieces along the side to add to the sense of movement. This is the move at 12 frames per second, and here it is at 24 frames per second. I think all camera moves look best when shot at 24 frames per second. Well, I've got some new ideas. That's really but Legos have some side-to-side -side play to them, and it seems to me they can stray off the intended path too easily. So I'm going to explore some methods that will keep the camera steady, on course, and on budget. I don't know about you, but a motion control camera rig is a bit out of my price range. Let's look at some ways to track alongside a subject. I found a vinyl lattice divider and two pieces of lattice cap molding that are pretty cheap at the hardware store. I cut the two molding pieces to short, equal lengths and joined them with a platform for the camera. So now the platform slides smoothly along the center edge piece. You can attach a phone support, and it's also strong enough to hold up a DSLR. To angle the camera up or down, you can add small risers to the front or back to tilt the camera. Carefully plan out the shot, working out the distance everything will move and how to keep the subject in frame. And then secure the track to the table. To get the most out of your camera move, include foreground objects that get close to the camera as well as objects in the background to give it depth. To determine the speed, use a stopwatch to time the action and then do the math. Multiply that time by 24 if you're shooting 24 frames per second, and then divide the distance by that number. This setup also needs a wire attached to it to gauge the movement, and a ruler can be used for measurement. Or you can run a piece of tape along the path and add the marks for each frame. This way, you can calculate an ease-in and ease-out for the movement. As you get to the beginning or end of the shot, gradually and evenly reduce the distance for each frame, getting it down to the shortest possible distance for the last frame. As you animate, keep the movement of the subject smooth and steady by measuring each move. If the camera is supposed to keep up with the subject, move at the same distance as the camera. But it can look good to have the subject move slightly faster than the camera. And it doesn't really take all that long to animate at 24 frames per second to get a smooth camera move. This is a PVC on-wall conduit available at hardware stores. A small piece of the cover slides tightly along the base and it can hold a phone. I used to be into model trains and so to do this camera move in my student film, I ran two parallel tracks along a wooden base and used two flat top train cars to hold the camera. It can hold a heavy camera and slide along the track smoothly. Or maybe you just need to do a simple pan. If you're using an app like Dragon Frame, you can use the drawing feature to plan the move down to the frame. For this pan, I used a small dot on the set to mark the beginning of the move, panned to the end, and drew a straight line to the new position of the dot. Then add tick marks for each frame and adjust the handles to create ease in and out. I think it's best to have a longer ease out than ease in, like it takes more time for the camera to come to a stop. If you aren't using Dragon Frame, you can attach a wire to the arm of the tripod that can line up with the curve. 
Plan out the move like you did for the tracking shot, except that the camera doesn't need to maintain a constant speed in the middle. It can build to full speed and then ease out. Or do a digital camera move. If you're shooting extra high resolution like with a still camera, you can zoom in on the image in an editing or compositing app without losing quality and animate the beginning and end positions. Add an ease in and ease out to keep it smooth. To simulate a camera move, you can move the background instead of the camera. Just use a ruler or yardstick to make the moves even. Make the moves on the subject even as well. And as before, it looks good to have the subject move a little faster than the camera to enhance the illusion of fast movement. Or move the set instead of the camera. For this shot, I put the LEGO Death Star on a Lazy Susan and spun it to move from room to room. Just note that the shadows may move in an odd way since the set is moving while the lights hold still. Now maybe you don't have the things I used for these camera moves, but the important thing to note is that I didn't spend any money to make any of the rigs. I just used what I could find around the house in the tool shed. So while you may not have vinyl lattice parts, you may have something else that will work for a smooth slider. Finding ways to move the camera can be just as creative as coming up with the action in front of the camera. So good luck with whatever method you use for your project, and thanks for watching.